back to the show. It was April of 1999 when journalist Tamara Leitner woke up to an active crime scene outside her Arizona apartment. Her neighbor had been sexually assaulted. Leitner began an investigation that would span 20 years, an obsession to use her own words. In her book, Don't Say a Thing, A Predator, A Pursuit, and The Woman Who Persevered, Leitner interviews the women attacked by serial rapist Claude Dean Hull. Along the way, Leitner learned about perseverance and courage and the strength to face a dark secret of your own. Tamara joins us now. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. What, what an incredible, just wealth of knowledge you have when it comes to this, but it was deeper than that. You spent years following and researching this story. Why? You know, as journalists, we cover, I've covered thousands of stories in yeah. my career, but this one, uh, it held on to me. I could never mm -hmm. let it go. Yeah. You shake, it does, it's, it's hard when those stories get you. Yes. And then you cannot shake them. Let's talk about Claude Dean Hall. He was a serial rapist. His first crime was actually right here in the Seattle area. That's right. Um, he started assaulting women back in the 70s. And it started out as peeping. He would peep in women's windows of their homes. And then he moved on to shopping malls. And finally, he started exposing himself. Mm. And then it escalated to sexual assaults. But yeah, he started right here. Gosh, how many years did it take for him to be found and, and tried for these crimes? That's really the unfortunate thing. He was able to get away with this for decades, Ugh. three decades about. You know, I think the most important thing with this is whenever you hear these stories, the, the, the biggest triumph overall over a monster like mm -hmm. this is when you find courage in these victim stories because you also had a secret that connected you to the victims that even your friends didn't know about. That's right. I was in a relationship that was pretty traumatic mm -hmm. for me and I wasn't able to deal with that, to be completely honest, until I started interviewing the survivors. And they really empowered me to be able to tell my story along with their stories. Wow. And it's all in the book. Yeah. Yeah. For the first time, um, I talk about it. And the reason really was because if I can help just one other woman mm -hmm. to tell her story or to get out of her situation, then it's worth it. You know, I think it's really interesting because you spent 20 years research, 20 years researching this, and then along the way, you, dis you discovered something really interesting: uh, is how we treat rape, the victims, how we talk about them. Where's the justice for them? You know, it, it's tough because if you think about it, we report on homicides, on murders, mm -hmm. all of the time, but. Sexual assault, it's something that, you know, we whisper about. Mm -hmm. we, we don't talk about it. Yep. And sexual assault survivors, they should not be ashamed. They should be empowered because they are survivors mm -hmm. and they are warriors. And we should help them feel that way. We should help them feel that way and say it's okay. Yes. I've talked openly about my childhood sexual assault because I, I need people to know that it isn't your fault and it isn't someone's fault, then mm -hmm. we need to know. And that's why books like this are so darn important. Um, there's also the semantics, isn't there, of the way we talk about, you know, oh, even yeah. as journalists. As journalists, how many times did I sit in front of a television screen and say, a woman was raped last night, instead of saying, a person raped a woman. Uh -huh. Like it happened to her, not at just, oh, I mean, what do you think about that, the semantics of how we use the words? I, I think you're absolutely right, but it's become ingrained in us. Mm -hmm. And you don't even think about it, which is unfortunate. We need to change the way we think about this in society, the way we talk about it in society, and it's going to take time. Yeah. Speaking of being a journalist, it means it takes you to places where you have to, to push yourself, push the limits. One of those limits you push yourself to is interviewing this man. You, <laughs> why did you want to do that? You know, he got in my head. He, he really got in my head and for 20 years, he was rattling around in there. Mm. And I needed to understand why he did this, how he could take something from so many women. And, and so 
I asked him if he would talk to me, if he would help me understand, was he born this way? Did he try to stop? And eventually he agreed to talk to me. And did he say that he could tell he was escalating, that he was spiraling? He did. He, he told me that he was getting to the point where he thought he might commit murder. <gasps> um, he knew that it was escalating. And, you know, I, I don't think that he is has remorse. I think that the only thing he is sorry for is that he got caught mm. and that he's not out there able to do it. He is a, um, a selfish person. Well, I'm glad that he is out of society. I, I know that there are many more monsters out there and that a lot of people have experienced trauma, but I, my question to you is, you know, this trauma, there's long-term, there's short-term trauma. Mm -hmm. What can we learn? What is the power of perseverance? You know, the women that I interviewed, they graciously and courageously agreed to go back in time to the most traumatic, horrific day in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they did this because they wanted to help other people, other right. women. They wanted to empower other women. So if you think about the perseverance of them going through days and years and decades mm -hmm. and then reliving this, it, it's, it's quite a testament to how they persevered. That is incredible. I'm so grateful that you shared this with us. And Tamara's going to be actually discussing the book, Don't Say a Thing, tonight, June 12th, at Baker, Paper Boat Booksellers in Seattle at 6.30. And Tamara will be joined for this discussion by King Five's Evenings, Kim Holcomb. That's right, both journalists have been friends and colleagues for years and years. In fact, Kim, Kim is around here somewhere. Kim is going to join us now. <laughs> Hi, friends. Oh, so tell me about how you two have been friends for years. You both work together in, in Arizona. But it predates that. We went to graduate school together. So we have been friends for 27 years. Oh, boy. Met when we were three. Um, no. no, you did not. No, no but no. 20, yeah, 27 years we've known each other. So this is like Look at this very, picture of you oh, two. Gosh. We went as Charlie's Angels for... Obvious, obviously. Actually, that was just, that's how old that is. It was in the 70s. No, I'm kidding. That weird dress up. That's when I was pregnant with our first kiddo. I was at our house. That my was house. At your house. That was through a house. baby shower. Yep, that's Aww. true. Um, and then that was just last year yeah. at our friend's wedding. So yeah, we um, we have known each other a really long time. So it's kind of surreal, like to have her here with my other friend and to be talking about this. But it's so great. Like this is such a huge accomplishment, and I am so proud of her. Thank and you. yeah, it's been interesting to read certain things that Tam didn't talk to any of us about. I yeah. Mean, it was, you know, even her closest friends, we didn't know everything. When you say you didn't know everything, is it about the relationship that she was sharing with us? This yeah. I mean, we, we all hung out together. Like, this was our friend group, but we just didn't know. Because I think a lot of times when people are in a difficult relationship, they keep it to themselves and they internalize it. And so, I mean, even just for me reading parts of the book, it brought up stuff that, like, this was really, I feel like, a therapeutic thing oh, yeah. for Tam to do to experience it through this. Did you know, like, at the time that you were going through such an abusive relationship, or was it when you were talking to these victims? <laughs> I think you kind of alluded to that earlier that these victims kind of helped you understand how terrible what you were going through was. When you were in it, mm -hmm. and I think this goes for anybody that's in a yeah. traumatic, harmful relationship, you don't realize necessarily that it's not healthy, that it's mm -hmm. not normal. And mm -hmm. I didn't talk to my family. I didn't talk to my friends. I just thought this was acceptable and this is the way that you are supposed to be treated. And mm. that's how a lot of women unfortunately feel and why they don't leave. Was there a pressure to feel perfect too? I mean, because on TV, you know, there's a lot of pressure to look perfect, feel per be perfect, yeah. be the best. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. And I mean, you know, from the outside, our relationship looked pretty darn good. I mean, you know, my best friends didn't know any, anything was wrong and yeah. they were at our house all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that that is part of it too, why this book I think is so meaningful is that these are things that we all know shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. But until we keep saying it shouldn't be yeah. this way, like it, it doesn't have to be this way. And we support one another in making that clear. Yeah. That's what will ultimately change. It's been fascinating, like the feedback that she's already getting from women she doesn't know who have read her book mm -hmm. saying, I feel so seen in this. And then you realize like, this is so much more common than we might know. Not your story specifically, but right. being in. Being in these. 
a toxic relationship. A hundred percent. My yeah. my own sister, a Tamara, not a Tamara, but a Tamara. <laughs> we didn't even realize the monster that was living under her nose. And when things come out and you realize, you're like, you're shocked. Yeah. You know. And again, you were saying we need to talk about this. Yeah. And I was mentioning as a, as a victim of childhood sexual assault, I actually had a hard time covering these stories as a journalist. I, mean, I, I went into a news director once and said, Kate, can I be recused from these stories because I don't think I'm going to do a fair job. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is hard. I mean, your experience has kind of strengthened your resolve in covering this, didn't it? It absolutely did, but it took me 20 years <laughs> yeah. to get to this point yep, yep. where I could talk about yeah. it and where I was willing to, you know, go public with it. Yeah. yeah. And so, she cared, to be clear too, she like had these boxes <laughs> of her research that she had done in Phoenix about the serial rapist, mm -hmm. and she's moved five times since then. Oh, I mean, she went to eight. the network, <laughs> like she worked in New York, and so she would take this stuff with her everywhere she went. Oh, so wow. that's also, I think, perseverance on your part to not give up on this story that was Thank rattling you. around in your brain and to do it. Thank what you. you finally did. I'm so Seriously, proud of you. I mean, so honestly, awesome. that's amazing yeah. and inspiring to so many of us out there who are sitting there thinking, you know, when we think we can't do something yeah. and we think that, like, now it's too late or we, just, we didn't get there. I mean, this is really powerful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I have to say, seeing you two here, <laughs> when you start in this industry, just to give you a little behind the scenes, it is so hard. <laughs> it is so it hard. It is so True. brutal. Yeah. You make no money. You eat whatever. If, hopefully there's food in the newsroom at some point. Yes. But That's it's one these, meal a day. <laughs> it's these relationships that keep us together and yeah. seeing you too. I mean, how have you helped each other through the years as, as women in business, as journalists? Oh, I, well, now to be clear, like Tammy is the investigative reporter who has won the Murrows and the Peabody's <laughs> and I am telling you about the best burritos to buy in Seattle. So Please we do whatever don't actually, downplay it. Oh my, too, okay? she just won an Emmy, come okay. on. But I, I think it's like, it has, we have always been able to bounce things yeah. off of each other, mm -hmm. but it's also been just having the relationship outside of work that is helpful. The right. bottles of wine that have been shared over the years, you know, that's the stuff. I think that's the Many. power of female friendship too, yeah. right? That like we get each other in a way that is important. And that's what this book shares as well, I think. Absolutely. What do you hope people take away from this? You know, I hope that people start to talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope that they start to talk and that they embrace where they are and they embrace their female friendships. And even if they talk to one person about, about what's going on in their life, one person yeah. is enough. Yeah. And keep talking to your friends who you feel, you know, don't don't be silent. Say something. If you if you feel it, you've got to keep saying it. We have to be good. We have to be good stewards of each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting Ooh, you. Thank you for thank coming you for on our show. Me. You are welcome here anytime. Obviously. I'll see you upstairs later. <laughs> All right. Love you for that. Okay. Well,